Welcome to question 7 of the 2018 Mathematical Methods Exam 1 for the Northern Hemisphere. In this video we will be looking at the solutions for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 7 we have let f be the function for the rule f of x equals 4 cos of x and g be the rule with the domain 0 to pi on 2 where the rule is 3 sine of x. For part A, we want to sketch the graph of F and the graph of G on the axes provided. So the first thing we're going to do is consider what the period of these graphs are. So the period of any sine or cosine graph is equal to 2 pi divided by n, where n is the coefficient of x. So in both of these cases, x is simply multiplied by 1, so the period would be 2 pi. So to go between 0 and pi on 2 for both of these graphs, we're going to have a quarter of a period. Next up, we're going to graph these. So f of x, we're going to put in blue, which is 4 cos of x. And we need to remember that cos starts at this point, so that would be at the point 0, 4, and it will end at an x-intercept at pi on 2. And we're just going to connect those with a smooth and continuous curve. Next up, we'll sketch g of x, which has the rule 3 sine of x. And it's going to start with an x-intercept here at 0, 0, and it will finish at its highest point, which is the amplitude, and that's going to be at pi on 2, comma 3. Once again, we're just going to connect those with a continuous smooth curve. So that is the answer for part A of this question. For part B, we're going to let C be such that f of C equals g of C, where C is between 0 and pi on 2. So just quickly, we can acknowledge that based on the graph we had before, both sine and cosine are positive. And our job will be to find the value of sine of c and the value of cos of c. So not c, but what sine of c and cos of c are. So if f of c equals g of c, then f of c would be 4 cos of c is equal to 3 sine of c. So whenever we've got a trigonometric equation with both cosine and sine present, we can divide by cosine. So dividing by cosine will give the tan ratio because we know sine divided by cos is tan. So therefore we'll have four on the left hand side is equal to three tan of C because sine over cos is tan. And now when we divide both sides of this equation by three, we'll find that the ratio of tan of c is simply equal to 4 divided by 3. And now 4 on 3 is an exact value we know, but we can use this information to construct a right angle triangle. So here's my right angle triangle, and we're going to have that this is the angle c here. And we know that tan of any angle is simply the ratio of the opposite over the adjacent. So, so we can remember that using TOA which is part of SOCAR TOA. So with that in mind, we know the opposite must be 4, so this length must be 4, and the adjacent, which is this length, must be 3. So using Pythagoras' theorem, we know that 4 squared plus 3 squared is 25, so this will be the square root of 25, which is simply 5. So our job now is simply to find the value of sine of C and of cos of C, and we're going to use this right angle triangle to do it. So if you think back again, we have not only TOA, but we've also got SOH and CAH as trig ratios. So this one is that sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And this one says that cos of theta, an angle, is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So sine of C is simply going to be the opposite, which is the length of 4 over the hypotenuse, which was found to be 5. And cos of C will be equal to the adjacent, which we know is 3 over the hypotenuse which was found to be 5. So they are the values for sine of c and cos of c that we were asked to find in this question. For part c we have let a be the region enclosed by the horizontal axes and the graph of f and the graph of g. For part 1 of this question we're asked to shade the region a on the set of axes that we had in part a and also to label the position of point c on the horizontal axes. So if we come back to part A, what we want to do is shade in this region here, which is the area between the horizontal axes and the two graphs of F and G. And as part of the question that we're answering at the moment, we also needed to label on the horizontal axes the point that represented C. So C was the intersection between the two graphs of F and G, 
which is this point labeled in red now. So here's an image that represents what we just did, which we'll need for part two of part C, which is to calculate the area of the region A, which we've done in yellow. So to calculate that area, we can use an integral. And for this integral, we're going to go between zero. And for the first part, we're going to go up to the value of C for the curve. And if we have a look, it's going to be the three sine of X curve that the area is underneath, which we did in green. So we're going to do the integral of three sine of X between those two terminals with respect to X. And then we're also going to add on the integral between the lower bound of C and the upper bound of pi over two. And this time it's under the blue curve, which we did as four cos of X. So we're gonna integrate four cos of X between those terminals. And for correct notation, we need a DX here. So that area is going to equal, and for the first integral statement, we can do the antiderivative of three sine of X, which is, which is negative three cosine of X. And that's going to be evaluated between zero and C. And we're gonna add on the antiderivative of four cos of X, which is four sine of X. And that is going to be between C and pi divided by two. So to evaluate this, we're going to do the upper terminal minus the lower terminals. So that will be minus three cos of C, subtract negative three cos of zero. And then we're going to add on the second part of this integral statement which is going to be four sine, and the upper terminal is pi on two, subtract four sine of C. So now we need to evaluate this. So we have negative three times cos of C, but on the previous slide, we found that cos of C had a value of three over five. And then we're going to subtract negative three times cos of zero, which is gonna be plus three, but cos of zero just has an exact value of one. And then we need to add on the second part, which is four times sine of pi on two. And sine of pi on two has an exact value of one. And then we're going to have minus four times sine of C, which we found to be four over five on the previous slide. So now our job is to simplify that further. So minus three times three over five is minus nine over five plus three. Then we have four times one is plus four then we're going to have minus 16 on five. So minus nine on five minus 16 on five is minus 25 on five. So this is going to equal three plus four is seven, minus 25 on five is five. So that is equal to two. And as this is an error, we can write it as units squared. So that is the answer for part C of this question.